Now, if you want to create something that is not an egoic thing, but is something <coughs> you re realize from the depth of your being that something wants to be created through you, whatever it may be. Maybe you want to, you're writing a, write a book, uh, open a hairdressing salon, uh, create a retreat center. <laughs> <laughs> or a conscious business or whatever you want to create. And you have the image, the vision comes to you. Or you may want to create, a, it's not necessarily selfish, a better place to live, a place that is externally more peaceful than where you are now, or warmer. You may have a vision of what it is that you want to achieve. And then you focus on that vision. And the most powerful way to manifest, as you probably know, I don't usually talk about that too much because other things are more important. I talk about the foundation for your life. But manifesting is a secondary thing that can be significant in your life. And to manifest, the, the most important secret, to use that word, I'm not specifically referring to a book called The Secret, but that's the, but there's helpful things in there too, as long as you don't believe that certain things that you want to manifest are going to make you happy. The, the power to manifest is in experiencing the fullness of the present moment, the undifferentiated fullness, what Jesus called life in its fullness, in one of the translations. I want you to have life in its fullness, he said. And that is not stuff. He's not referring to things. Life in its fullness is an inner state of being. It is to experience, to know, to realize the beingness within you, the I am, which is consciousness itself. That is life. That is the fullness of life in the words of Jesus. The fullness of life is to, to, to realize that so that once you realize that, and it is consciousness, you, you know yourself as consciousness, once you know that, then no future moment can possibly be better. Anything that can happen in the future is an adding on to. So if you bring together if you have a vision in your mind of what it is you want to achieve or create or manifest, and you bring this vision into this sense of still fullness that you sense now, and you bring that together, that is the most powerful creative tool, the way that it's usually expressed, Jesus expressed it too, he said, when you pray for something, uh, believe that you already have it. That's, but I think he probably used actually slightly different words, but that's how it was written down. He uh, he's probably said, feel that you already have it. Whatever it is that you want to have, that you think is going to be you need to you need to feel already the feeling that you and now how do you do that by feeling that which is beyond uh, the world of phenomena 
out of which everything arises, which is consciousness. So when you know yourself as consciousness, that's already the fulfillment. Let's say even a, an insignificant thing, let's say you want to have an, uh, a nice house, let's just say, if I had a nice house in, in, out in nature, then I would be really happy. I want to have a nice, a nice house in nature next to a little forest, and then there's a lake there, and I can walk to the lake, and then how would you feel? Okay, I would feel exactly the way I'm feeling now. I want to live in Hawaii and then have a deck out, have a deck behind my house with a very comfortable chair, and then I would sit in there every day and contemplate the ocean. Well, good luck. <laughs> How would you feel? What would you feel? I would feel the fullness of life. Okay? And you can't feel it now. No, why can't you feel it now? because I'm not sitting in this deck chair <laughs> and I'm not looking at the ocean and it's not sunny. <laughs> That's why I can't feel the foot and I don't have a house behind me that I say is mine. So I can't feel the fullness of life now. Okay, then do you think you're going to feel it when you finally sit in the deck chair? No, if you can't feel it now, you can't feel it then, because you will be again dissatisfied in your deck chair behind the house because you will get very bored and stung by mosquitoes. <laughs> And it's too hot anyway. I should have gotten a house higher up uh, because <laughs> down here by the beach is just too hot. Why didn't I get a house a bit higher up? Because there's a mountain just behind me. It would be cooler. Then <coughs> you sell your house, get one higher up. But then the nights are too cold. You can't sit outside anymore. Mm. If you're not, if you cannot feel the fullness of life on your bicycle and enjoy that moment tremendously of being on your bicycle, you will not feel the fullness of life when you're sitting in your Rolls Royce or Bentley or Ferrari test, testosterone, test, testarossa. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. There's an overvaluing of things around you that I need things to be in a certain way around me to be happy and content. That doesn't mean that you cannot change the environment around you. You can take steps towards changing it because you may have certain preferences. That's fine. Everybody has a preference. The preference. There are some spiritual teachers who say, or I don't know who, I can't remember, but there are some who say, I have no preference. Well, they live somewhere, but not somewhere else. So you must have a preference for being there, unless somebody picks them up and puts them somewhere. <laughs> <clears throat> So you can, you can have a preference for living here rather than there. Yes, this country rather than that country. But while you're not there, you can be, be in touch with the fullness of life within yourself now. And then it's much more likely that your external surroundings will reflect your state of consciousness.